Good morning. Thank you all for coming. We're going to have some uh, fun breaking browsers or specifically hacking autocomplete. So uh, let's just uh, talk a little bit about my background here, what I get to do for a living. Uh, founder and CTO of White Hat Security. I uh, have a blog that I was uh, fortunate enough to get an award. I'm the fifth most popular Jeremiah says on Google. I have to beat the prophet and the TV show. I'm, I think I can beat the prophet because he's not generating any, generating any new material. <laughs> and uh, I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so that's kind of fun too. And uh, some other things. But uh, <laughs> let's just get past that, shall we? So web security. Web security comes in two halves. My day job with White Hat Security is the security of websites, uh, hacking into them, finding bones, things like that. The other half, uh, it's kind of the night job, uh, browser security. Um, the way it works is in web security, a website must be able to defend itself against a hostile client. The browser must be able to defend itself against a hostile website. And we're going to build hostile websites to hack browsers. Now, why is browser hacking cool? Why I like going after it? It's because everybody in here, I would imagine, uses a browser of some kind. Everybody of the 1.6 billion people online use a browser to surf the web and do various other things. So that's 1.67 billion people surfing 206 million websites, which is why web security is such a daunting task. Now, what do the bad guys target and what are the things that we're going to be looking at? Bad guys, in, at least in the browser market, I'm sure uh, other places too, they'll target things with the largest market share, they'll exploit features that are per enabled by default preferably, and uh, we're going to give bonus points for design flaws, which is uh, what I spend my time uh, going after. So let's look at the, the, br the browser market share real quick and, uh, and see who's surfing the web with what. Uh, so at the top of the list, you'll actually see uh, IE8 with uh, about a quarter of the web. One of the things w that were uh, interesting to me is if you count IE6 and IE7 together as a singular browser, it is actually the most popular browser out there. Uh, browsers that are, you know, IE6 about a decade old now is combined with IE6 and 7, most popular uh, browsers out there. I did a cutoff at, uh, at Safari down there at about 2.9% Safari 4. So that's going to be our target set. These are the browsers that we're going to have a look at the security of autocomplete today. So to put this in real terms, so IE8, if you do the math between market share and number of people on the web, you know, relative terms, IE8 has about nearly half a billion people using their product. Uh, IE6, another quarter billion. Uh, Firefox doing very well at 351 million, so on and so forth. Just to give you kind of context of the exposure a browser phone will have, you know, they're last census, uh, 2010 census, said uh, 307 million people in the U.S. So there's uh, almost uh, double the amount of IE8 users as population in the United States. So it's pretty serious. So we got security features in the browsers. We got sandboxes, code security, memory protection, blacklist. We even got green bars for SSL and EVSSL. We got these cool warnings on a phishing site. All these kind of things, you know, when SSL fails, you guys have seen these things, right? <clears throat> All these things designed to protect us, and they protect us, you know, against some some things. Um, but we're going to bypass all those things and do malicious websites that won't pop up any warnings. So I follow web security a lot, and uh, there's this one bug here that uh, is probably about eight to ten years old now. You know, many of you have seen this before on CSS history stealing, where you look at the link color of a set of links, you can tell where a user's been and where they haven't been, and some of the the really good proof of concept code. Uh, that's been out there was doing uh, 10,000 URLs a second, so it was really, really fast. Safari 5 has fixed this bug. Uh, Firefox 4, which is due out soon, as, uh, will be fixing it as well uh, because they won't let you set properties in CSS in a visited pseudo class, and, they, and the JavaScript method of doing it, the API of get, uh, get property value, will lie to you. So this is going away. So. This one is really cool because we want to know the user. When we target the user with a design flaw, we want to know where they've been so we can do you know, interesting things. If we know they're a user of this website, whatever the website may be, we target them or target that website with a vuln, cross-site scripting, CSRF, you name it. One thing I just want to gloss over briefly is that we can still tell where a user is logged in. Image source equals some logged in URL, and a lot of times you can tell where a user is logged in. So we're not going to talk a little too much about this, or if at all, this is a blurb here. We don't know our users has been anymore from this point forward when the new browsers come out, but we're still going to know where they logged in. So given those bugs are going to start going away, what I set out with the premise is I want to know your name, who you work for, where you live, 
and your email address right at the moment you visit a website, even though you've never visited the website before, let alone typed in any of this information. If we got this to work, it would be pretty powerful. You know, nice uh, privacy violation. So who do you ask for this information? Uh, there's been some research out there with, uh, I'm not going to pronounce that name. Uh, we're not going to ask Google or Facebook or even t and but there has been research out there on uh, de-anonymization and SMB cloaking. But also, these are far too hard, and we're not going to use these. We're going to ask our good friend Safari. <laughs> Safari has a feature, and you might have seen this in the news a little bit, a leak just a little bit early. Um, it has this option called autofill web forms that is enabled by default. When you set up a web form on a website, similar to that, that's all it really takes, it'll actually pull out information out of your me card in your browser. So this is how it works. So when you, I'm going to demo it for you. <laughs> Given the demo gods a uh, smile. To show you the actual behavior of it. All right, so if you just type in the first letter of your name, it actually pulls it out of the me card. You go to the next one here, you know, I work for White Hat, and it fills it out. It pulls it right out of the me card. So you can only get who the user actually is. So one way to look at this particular thing is if you can simulate these button clicks, you can actually force the browser to give up this particular information. So this is how easy it is, really, to do this stuff. I'm going to dynamically create, let me go back to the slides momentarily just to show you the, the logic of it. That's about the extent of the sophistication of the code. I'm just creating JavaScript text events on some website, just loop through A through Z on your name, dynamically create the form fields with the preset values, cycle through the alphabet for your name or whatever it is, and profit, steal the data with JavaScript. Real, real simple. So we'll hit the start button here, and you can see how this works. It's only it's that slow for demonstration purposes. It's only visible for demonstration purposes. We can actually use uh, cascading style sheets, the opacity, to, uh, to make it completely invisible. The interesting about this particular demo is it's just JavaScript code. If you wanted to land this on a whole lot of users, all you would have to do is buy, you know, spend 100 bucks and send it out to about 100,000 users on an advertising network and just land JavaScript on everybody's browser out there. And this would happen uh, instantaneously. So, Again, this information comes out even though you've never been to the site and you've never entered this information, and it is on by default. If you look at the back of the metrics, this is 65, 64 or so million people that are vulnerable to this one. It's uh, vulnerable on Safari 4 and 5 until the day before yesterday when they patched it. Anybody here from Apple Security? Figures. <laughs> 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 Sure, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the text events, uh, the, I only had like 24 hours and I was drinking last night. Uh, the text events, when you enter a text event, it won't autofill in a text event. It will respond to normal button clicks but not JavaScript text events. I really would have preferred they would have just called me and say how best to fix it because you have this button called tab, right? And let me show you how this works. Uh, let me... Uh, let me go over to Safari on Windows, because I'm running the patch version on Windows. One second here. Let's pull that up. Actually, you just have to take my word for it here, okay? Because that'll be slow. So, J. Tab. <laughs> <laughs> That works on the patched one. <laughs> There's some trickery that's going to go into it to make the exploit code work, but <laughs> give me time. <laughs> Does it still work if the private browsing is turned on as yeah. Didn't check. Didn't check. So we'll see. Uh, so that works Windows, Mac, whatever. All right. Let's go back to our slide work. Now, that's just name, address, telephone number, so I know where you, your name, where you live, where you work, title, email address. Cool for phishing, uh, phishing and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, what about stealing other, other autofill data? Data that is, uh, was, was, in fact, previously entered. You know, search terms, credit card numbers, 
secret questions and answers, you know, those sorts of things. For that, we have to go to IE 6 and 7. One, nearly one third of the web still uses these particular browsers, so it's quite powerful. Again, that's about a half a billion people. Internet Explorer, I'm gonna show you some demos here. Internet Explorer 8 is safe uh, on this particular one, but IE 6, 7 is not. Autocomplete, the way it works is when you enter an email address, for instance, on site A, name equals email, you type that in, you hit enter. If you go to any other website, so what website B, C, D, whatever, if they have an input form that's named email as well, you'll get an autocomplete drop down like on the right side there on any other on any other website. That feature there is not enabled by default, but there's a gotcha there. I'll explain that in a second. Now, I'm gonna show you here, let's see if I can get the, uh, the demo up and working. Let's see here. All right. I'm going, this is a, just a plain web form that I'm gonna submit to myself. Let's say F name, uh, white hat, uh, email, well, whatever. Hit submit right now. It doesn't want to submit. Good, submit this. Now, if I put my name in here, now the behavior on the button click is down. The down arrow, down, will drop down the the, uh, the, uh, the autocomplete, you hit down again, you select it, and you hit enter, and it lands in there. Good enough? Now, I'm gonna fill out a few more of these, you know, my email at something.com, uh, query strings, send that in there. I'm gonna show you, like, I have Craigslist up. Uh, hi, hi, black hat, right? Put that in there, good. No results. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we put high black hat in there, so you can kind of see. Is that in there? Yeah. So high black hat, so it's in there, so down, down, down. Now, we're gonna simulate that in JavaScript. You hit enter, and you simulate down, down arrow text events, uh, keystroke events in the browser, and you pull out all the information and autocomplete. All you need to do is have a list of the well-known ones in, in IE. So let's go back to the, uh, the chart real quick. Actually, uh, so that's, how you, that's the extent of what, uh, let me go back here, where were we? That's the code there. There was some little trickery you had to do in the source code because uh, JavaScript moves faster than the UI, so you have to add some delay in there, but it's nothing nothing major. I have a list of about, when you saw the demo the demo there, that was about, it goes through about 50 name value, uh, form names in about you know, 10 seconds or so, and you just pull out all the information and save it off site somewhere. Uh, any questions so far? Yes, sir. Can you, uh, so the question was, can you hide the dropdown? Uh, I have not been able to. It's it's actually not part of the DOM. It's actually part of the GUI, and it's very much topmost. You can move it all around and things like that. So that is, you will see that visibility a little bit. Depends on what you're after, but yeah, you will see it. So again, you can over, undercover, uh, uncover search terms, credit card numbers, CVs, aliases, contact information, basically anything you might want. Now I mentioned that feature is not on by default. The rub is, is that when you fill out a, a non-password form, it asks you if you want to turn on autocomplete. You just fill out the form and it pops up this little one and nice default yes, you click yes and it turns on really quickly. So it's hard to say if it's, 100, it's definitely not 100% uh, exposure on this one in IE 6 and 7, but I'm sure it's a significant volume. I don't, didn't have the guts to put it out there on the wire and measure. <laughs> All right, so we've picked on Safari, IE 6 and 7. Let's pick on Firefox. <laughs> Firefox, I have not been able to find a way to read autocomplete information, but we can write to it a lot. Why is this useful? Well, you can frame people, make it appear that autocomplete They've uh, f did something or said something that they really didn't. So let's say their email address or their search terms, they search for something, uh, something that Google 